Imagine for me, if you will, a kingdom. But not one flowing with milk and honey, but wine and swimming holes. Yeah, now that's a Texas land fit for a king, which I guess is why they call it King's Land. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. We're starting extra early for this one and heading to the middle of the Texas Hill Country, Kingsland, just 60 miles northwest of Austin and 100 miles north of San Antonio. And if kings need castles and fields full of wine grapes, then this is truly a king's land. As you can see, we're getting a very early jump on the day and heading straight toward Parisos Vineyards. And getting up this early, I could use a drink. Okay, yes, it is coffee, not wine yet. <laughs> I think it's still a little early for that. Yes, we aren't here to drink wine, at least not for breakfast. We're here to harvest it. And so it's time for me to grab a bucket. But first, a quick lesson from owner Seth Martin. Well, good morning. Hey. Well, uh, welcome to Parisos Vineyards. Yeah, thanks for having us. Have you ever picked grapes? Not a time, not, never ever. All right, so here's some pruners. Oh, all right, all right. And so, without further ado, let's pick some grapes. Let's get to it. And the grapes we're gonna pick today are called Tempranillo. Yeah, They're big nice ripe bunches. Eat Try it, grapes. eat it, eat it. Seriously. That, yeah, put it in your mouth. It's got seeds. Oh. That's so sweet. Yeah, there's about 24% sugar right now. Oh, it's delicious. And a typical grape in the grocery store might be 8 to 12%. Grocery store grapes are picked based on aesthetics, how they look. Wine grapes are picked based on maturity of flavor. Got it. The job itself is pretty simple. You find the stem and you snip the bunch. We like to have a lot of raisining, where the raisins contribute a lot of great flavors to the uh, wines. Got it. That's it, and we'll come around and collect, collect your buckets and, and go from there. <laughs> okay, so I got these two rows are mine, right? <laughs> these two rows will take you about two weeks, but have fun. <laughs> All right, snip, snip. Snip, snip. <laughs> ready? <laughs> Thanks, Seth. Parisos is a Greek word used in the Bible, meaning exceedingly abundant, as in abundant life and abundant harvest. And I'd say that this is a very abundant harvest. Oh, look at this bunch. Man, if raisins are the bonus, I just hit the jackpot. And they are so delicious. Man, that's so good. Texas grapes. Uh, no one will notice if just a few are missing, right? <laughs> All right. All right, I got to keep moving. I got a lot of work to do. It is work, but it's a labor of love, and one that is quickly becoming a ritual all over Texas. And as our wine industry grows, so do the number of grapes, ripe for the picking, and fun for all ages. All right, wait, you're not 21, ma'am. You can't drink wine. What are you doing clipping grapes? I drink the juice. Oh, just the, okay. <laughs> all right, that counts. In fact, all five of Seth's kids are out here picking grapes, and much faster than me, to my shame. Maybe I need some tips from the queen of this kingdom, Laura Martin. How's it going, Chet? Well, not so good, Laura. I've got 10-year-olds that are burning me at this thing. Yeah, so they're, you... they're seasoned pickers out here. Man, here, I, let me I'm show getting you. embarrassed. Okay. Okay. More than one at a time, get a fuller bucket faster. That's Man. my trick. These are, this is how the pros do it. Feels like something you feed the king. Yes. I don't... <laughs> they're so sweet, I just want to keep eating them, but I feel like I'm eating your kid's college education when I do. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. No, I'll, I'll stop eating them. I'll just get to work. Thank you. Here you go. <laughs> Have at it. Thanks. Yeah, there'll be plenty of wine to drink once all the work is done. That's definitely not how you do it. <laughs> and after some serious snipping and picking, time to head to the house. Look at these buckets. Look at these buckets of grapes. So we're taking them up here to the uh, processing house. And I'm just along for the ride. I'm gonna see what these guys do with this many grapes. Back at the Martin's house, the grapes are unloaded, prepped, and here comes the really fun part. Every harvest, Parisos Vineyards enlists the help of volunteers to kick off the winemaking process in only the most time-tested of methods. Wash them piggies off real good. You know, I've never felt so close to my wine, all the way down to my squishy toes. The Texas wine industry may still be relatively young, but the winemaking methods are purely classic. 
I'm standing knee deep in a bucket of grapes. This is Texas wine. Grape, sir? Grape? No. Of course, you can visit Parisos Vineyards year round, not just for the harvest, to see the vineyard and sample many of their award winning wines. But if you can join them for harvest, roughly July and August, you can partake in one of Texas's newest traditions. To experience the sweetness of life, both in the grapes and in the moment. <laughs> this day may just be starting, but already it feels pretty exceedingly abundant. All right, I'm juicy enough to jump in a lake, but also hungry enough to eat a fish straight out of one with my bare teeth. Better find some nourishment and fast. Well, I'd call that pretty fast. This is Hoover's Valley Store and Cafe, a gas station with one delicious twist. You see, it's half convenience store, but also half country cooking, carrying on the traditions of this great Hoover's Valley. And this is cafe owner Lou Wells. Back then it was just, you know, one farm or ranch stretched along the Colorado okay. River. And there was a school, and both my parents went to school there. My grandparents went to school there. <laughs> oh, wow. So you got deep roots right deep here. Deep roots. And in, in 1941, while the war was raging, I went to school there. So. Wow. You wouldn't know it now, but Hoover's Valley used to be a thriving community, marked now by only one cemetery in this store. Right. And this property right here is where I used to have my Easter egg hunt with the cows roaming all around, but now <laughs> we can't have a cow around here now. <laughs> not, not really, just on the menu. That's right. <laughs> and beef is certainly on the menu. The best hamburgers in the county, wonderful chicken fried steak, have daily specials. Uh -huh. Then we have Laura's recipe for chicken salad. You just met yeah. Laura, which is... Famous, or soon to be famous. <laughs> Nana's uh, pot of pinto beans, which is always on my own recipe. Uh -huh. We used to cook four cups of beans, and that served our crowd. And today, to mark our progress, and we have to cook 16 cups of beans. <laughs> I like it. Four things should be measured <laughs> in cups of beans. Well, yes, I, I think. think that is. As you see, this cafe definitely has the traditional country cooking but I can't pass up a local specialty. All right, so I came to Hoover's Valley Cafe on a mission for like a burger or a chicken fried steak, but when I found out that the chicken salad was Laura's recipe from Parisos Vineyards, how could I pass that up? Oh my gosh, look at this thing. That is a monster chicken salad sandwich. So it's served on ooh, warm focaccia bread, and there you look inside, oh, celery, chicken, and it even has grapes in it. How appropriate is that? There's even melted cheese on it. Ooh. Oh, all the herbs in that focaccia bread and then all the flavors in that chicken salad, that is delicious. You got that salty and then when you hit a grape, it pops in your mouth, you get that sweet explosion. And then all the bites that abandon ship, right? Scoop them up with the chips. You know, usually you think, I'll go for the chicken salad, right? Stay light, quick on my toes for day tripping. But man, if, if I eat this whole thing, it's gonna put me down. No time for napping. These parts have much more for us to see. And after a morning spent in the hills, I think it's time to head to town. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Kingsland, the land of kings. This small town of around 6,000 straddles the border between Burnett and Llano counties. It is truly the land of kings with kingly water towers and kingly silos and kingly coffee companies. Truth be told, the main strip through Kingsland isn't much to see. Well, because the true beauty of this king's land lies not in its architecture or fancy shopping, but in its people and its natural surroundings. However, it does have a handful of interesting historic buildings, such as the Antlers Inn. Built in 1901 as a resort and retreat for the railroad, it still has a number of railroad cars and this house. Okay, so you might not recognize it now, but this house right behind me is very important in Texas history, Texas cinematic history, because this house was once the home of the 1974 film, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Let's go look around. Originally located in Round Rock, Texas when featured in the movie, this home was moved to Kingsland in 1998 for preservation reasons. Today, it's the delicious Grand Central Cafe, 
and the Eggs Benedict are way better than anything Leatherface ever whipped up. Although he did make a pretty good steak. Anyway, with the fresh paint and upscale decor, it's hard to imagine this place was ever scary to begin with. Looks pretty normal these days. I mean, I don't see anything terrifying about this place. Huge credit to the set designers. They can make any old house look scary. Just chalk that one up to movie magic, I guess. Let's keep moving along. All right, so where's that lake we're gonna jump into? Well, around here, it isn't so much finding the lake, it's picking which one. All right, here we have another chance to review our Highland Lakes. So pay attention, kids. Up here at the top, we have Lake Buchanan, which flows down the Colorado River into Inks Lake, which continues to flow down into Lake LBJ. And right here in this general area is Kingsland, right there, and which is where we are now. And now you know why I was never a weatherman. <laughs> Good thing swimming doesn't take much hand-eye coordination. All the lakes in this area were formed by dams, which caused the waters to back up and flood hill country valleys to create some of the most dramatic lakes in Texas. And here in Kingsland, we are between Inks Lake and Lake LBJ. Seeing as we've already taken the plunge into Inks Lake, I think this day trip should head to Lake LBJ, one of the constant level lakes in the Highland Lakes chain, meaning it's full time, play time, all the time. Sorry, but man, does that look fun. I'd join him in a heartbeat. Only problem is, I don't own a boat. Wait, that's not really a problem out here because we can always head to the yacht club. Ha 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 ha, beautiful day for yachting. But not like that, all right? This is still the Texas Hill Country. No ascot required. Especially not here. The Lake LBJ Yacht Club and Marina. The place to rent a boat for the day on Lake LBJ. Let's boat. Load them up, crew, and let's hit the lake. The marina is right beside the Wirtz Dam, holding back over 10 square miles of water and sunshine which creates a backyard paradise for communities like Horseshoe Bay and Granite Shoals. A paradise that we get to fully enjoy. Okay, so if you rent a boat, you gotta get the toys to play with on the boat, and we got a lot of them. We got a tube, and then the classic, water skis. You know, we may not have snow skiing here in Texas, but we can water ski pretty much year round. A kneeboard, of course you sit on your knees, get drunk behind a boat, and then a wakeboard. Okay, so, which one to do first? I think I'll start with the classic water skis. Woo! Yeah, it's brisk. Oh, it has been years since I've water skied. Go! But hey, looky there. I was totally expecting to face plant. With the rise of wakeboarding and other water sports, water skiing has definitely taken a back seat. And it's a shame because water skiing is the history of this lake, dating all the way back to the 1950s. And they were definitely much better at it than I am. <laughs> He's off! He's off! Man, having two feet that move separately is totally, totally different. I forgot how weird it feels. All right, show me the wakeboard. All right, so we're gonna shorten the rope. It's ideal if you have a shorter rope while you're wakeboarding. I don't care, Brandon. I'm just here to look good. Got it. Do my triple backseat double flip Oreo. I have no idea what that means, but this does feel much better. <laughs> Lake LBJ was actually formed in 1950 to provide cooling for the Ferguson power plant. And of course, water recreation. Even LBJ himself used to come out and enjoy the lake. But I better share the rope with the crew. Brandon's turn. The man's pretty much a natural at everything. So just a quick lesson and he's good to go. Yeah! 
get it. You ready? Kneeboarding is probably the easiest thing we've done so far and a great way to learn how to ride behind a boat. But there is such a thing as overconfidence. No! <laughs> Next up, tubing and a Mary versus Kelly tube off. You know, it's always fun when the entire point of the sport is to thrash someone off into the water. And we have a Mary down. But despite losing the tube off, Mary did manage to wakeboard for the very first time. She's got it! One-handed already, huh? I call that overconfidence. Obviously, this crew wasn't assembled for our water action sports skills. But who cares? The point isn't to master it, just to try it and enjoy it. Although this one did hurt a little bit. No pain, no glory. Uh, need to go one more? I think I need to sit this next one out. All right. This is what an afternoon on the lake is all about. <laughs> you got it? You. While Lake LBJ is a great one, Texas is full of beautiful lakes and almost all have public access. So boat or no boat, the lakes are calling your name. Get out there, because here in Texas, sunshine and water are always free. And after a few hours on the lake, it's time to head back to the marina, which has its own form of lakeside enjoyment, the Granite Beach Water Park. If getting drugged behind a boat isn't your idea of fun, well, here's another way to get wet on LBJ. <laughs> Next will be my triple gainer. I'm just kidding, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, diving tricks were never my forte, but I am pretty good on the trampoline. Jumping sit move and flying dismount. Okay, not that good. Zero points. Maybe a cannonball. I give it 10. And the Russian judges say? Six point five. Six point five. Throw out the East German Stop. judge. <laughs> Throw him out. That's better. This park is full of inflatable fun. Open weekends, Memorial to Labor Day. This place is awesome. And it's not just for little kids. Okay, well, some of them might just be for little kids. But one thing's for sure, and it's that this park is guaranteed to bring out the little kid in all of us. Now these may all just look like simple bouncy house things, but don't be fooled, they're not that easy. Cue the Bon Jovi, cause these are slippery when wet. <laughs> I'm looking for a blobbin buddy. Anyone? No. Nope. Fail. Fail again. Sadly, I'm no better. Oh well. However, the water weenie is a different matter. Oh man. It's too bad the water weenie isn't an Olympic sport. But here's a slide of Olympic proportions. A 200 foot tube shoot. Let's tube. Something you'd expect at high dollar water parks right here on Lake LBJ. <laughs> now that's good stuff. Man, I'm worn out and I'm getting hungry. I think it's time to go. Okay, let's dry off and find some grub which is actually right above our heads. So if you spend your day in the water, then you gotta spend your evening on the rocks. So this is On The Rocks, a 1960s house turned hilltop restaurant, quickly becoming the hangout spot for lake folk in and around LBJ. 
Really nice place to come, hang out with all your buddies. Yeah. So this is one of those happy places. You get oh, up here, yeah. you can't help but smile and feel good. Yeah. Hard to beat this view, right? It's not bad. That's you could go to the good. Oasis in Austin and, and, and see a mud puddle, you know, but <laughs> or you can come out here and see a nice lake, you know. Whoa, his words, not mine. Now, I wouldn't call Travis a mud puddle, but it's hard to argue with the views of one of the fullest lakes in Texas. And since it faces west, that means beautiful hill country sunsets. It's beautiful and there's a wonderful view and follow a little trail and see all kinds of <laughs> weird and exotic things, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's the truth. The art installations up on this hilltop are a bit unexplainable, but it fits in because so is the food. You'd expect traditional lake grub from a place like this, but what you get on the rocks is authentic homemade Italian. Here's Matt, the owner, to explain. You know, you guys have the outdoor sort of lake vibe out here, but you got, you know, this sort of nice Italian food on the menu. How does this whole place work? It was what we were good at. Uh, yeah. we're, it's an Italian family. It's all family recipes. Great, great grandma, great grandma, grandma, <laughs> my mom and myself. And my mom still does a lot of my prep. There's a lot of recipes she still won't give up to anybody else to do, so <laughs> she gets stuck back there. <laughs> It's definitely hard taking them from big family gatherings to serving one at a time. But I'm glad they did. And so are the customers who love this place. It's a lot of Horseshoe Bay people and we get a good amount that come every day. Eat, Seriously? Enjoy the food, oh yeah. It's a casual place. We're fun, we do live music. What should I order tonight? Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> one of my personal favorites is the creamy chicken pesto. One of our most popular now is pistachio chicken. Chicken breaded and uh, crusted in pistachios uh -huh. with a white wine cream sauce with artichoke hearts, mushrooms, and sun-dried tomatoes. Oh man, that sounds awesome. Yep, I'm gonna have that. <laughs> oh wow, look at this. This is the pistachio crusted chicken. It was recommended by the owner and everyone else in the restaurant, so I had to get it. Pistachio crusted fried piece of chicken, fettuccine with Alfredo sauce, some mushrooms, and I can't even tell what else is in this pile of deliciousness, but I'm gonna eat it all. Mmm, 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 mmm. This is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the cream sauce is light, buttery. Oh, it's so good. And then the sun-dried tomatoes come in with that little zesty punch. I mean, with a view like this, this place doesn't need to have incredible food, but it does. So you start the day with wine or vino, and then you finish with this Italian food, and somehow you feel like you're worlds away, and yet you're still in Texas. Man, I love our state. What a day. The Texas sun shines brightly over Kingsland. It nourishes the fruits of the land. It warms the temperature of the water and brightens the spirits of the local people. Now we may not all be royalty, but this place can certainly make you feel like it. I mean, look around. This is why I go day tripping. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos. Which flows down into Lake Eeks, which makes Lake actually. <laughs> So if you spend your day in the water, <laughs> so if you spend your day in the water, all right, ready? <laughs> Other side. Big old ripe bunches. Uh, sort of reminds me of my underwear. Three, two. <laughs> I never count that. Never. It's always like. We're going live the satellite. Okay, so it's a small town cafe. Why don't I even start there? Okay, so you might not recognize it now. Rec rec this house right behind me was actually very important in Texas. Wait, this is a very important house. All right, Texas cinematic history. You see, this home was once the home and the house of a house that was in a movie of a home of a man. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at The Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet The Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. 
Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, Condias, amigas.